Hello friends, welcome to C Sharp Space. Today in this video, we will discuss about how to use a one tap of Google sign in in ASP.NET Core. So let's start. So in first step, uh, we need to create a client ID and a client secret uh, from a Google uh, Cloud Platform. Here uh, uh, you need to add an app like I have already created a project for a test like this and here uh, you need to create a credential uh, means it's a open auth 2.0 client uh, from the credential sections here I already created and this for name and this for all the uh, javascripts origins uh, you can uh, also get a more details about a Google one time sign in uh, from this uh, Google guide. I will provide uh, this link in the uh, description of the, this video. And you can read here all the details uh, related to Google API. And there is two key points in Google one tap is Google one tap can only be displayed on a HTTPS domains means the site which have a SSL and if you are testing a uh, google one tap sign in on your local host uh, as like i am using uh, this for local host then you need to add both means uh, the uh, the local host and the local host with port number in the authorized javascript origins as like this i am using both with port number and without port number and then i'm adding this authorized redirect urls this url name and this is the by default sign ins uh, route here is the blank data uh, blank uh, sv.net core project with uh, mbc pattern this is all the contents by default pages that is created uh, while we create a sv.net core project so so now uh, we open our Visual Studio here. Uh, this is the blank SP.NET Core MVC project. So uh, here uh, in first step, we need to add uh, new get packages uh, for uh, using a uh, one tap sign in. So we need to add two new, new get packages. First one is Google API.auth, and second one is Microsoft SP.NET Core authentication dot google so here uh, i need to add a new get package for this Just click on magin h uh, new get packages then click on browse then we search this uh, google api dot auth select and then install this install here a uh, latest stable version now this package is added and here now need to add for this now we search this and cut it uh, currently i am using here uh, sv.net code 2.21 uh, so this i think this latest uh, stable version is not supported so i change this for this 2.1.1 now this uh, installing a new get package for uh, authentications google now uh, this naked package is uh, added so now in uh, next uh, we need to add uh, this js files for uh, uh, showing a pop-up for a one tap login so uh, we need to add this script inside the head section of the shell this is the layout.cstml here we add that script to here in head section it's save it and then uh, we need to add this html here is the client id and this is the login uri means uh, after uh, authenticating google uh, for the user then again back to to this uh, google response method for uh, fetching the records so uh, we need to add this HTML. 
you can replace uh, this client ID from uh, your client ID that you generated from uh, Google Cloud Platform. This is the client ID. You can use this uh, client ID to replace it here. So now uh, we choose any page for displaying the Google One Tab login. Like I am using this about section. Uh, this is by default created page. So we need to use this estimate for displaying the pop up. And then uh, in next step, we need to uh, create a uh, method for retrieving our data from uh, Google. So uh, we go to our controller for uh, creating uh, this method. Uh, for getting a google response so i am opening this from controller.cs uh, this is the by default created a uh, controller when we creating a template for sp.net co mbc so here i am creating a method for this it's a public public async we use the sync method here async and uh, task and then uh, here i choosing this as action result action result and then it's a google response and we need to also route this as a google response route and then uh, writing this uh, uh, google response because we redire redirect the page after uh, google sign in so i copy this from here now now we saying a return view after we change this so Firstly, we uh, create a CRF token for uh, Google. So I am creating uh, one object like a Google CRF name, a CSRF name is equal to G underscore CSRF underscore token. we change this i think spelling is mismatch and then it's uh, where cookie is equal to request dot uh, cookies and we create uh, cookies for this it's uh, this name cookie it's a uh, google crf name and then if if cookies is uh, null then it's return status code status code int int https uh, http HTTP status code. Yeah, we need to add namespace for this, so I'm pressing here a control dot. It's using system dot net and dot bad request. No. If you have a request body it's equal to request dot form dot form then we writing this uh, Google CRF name we getting a data from uh, Google response 
if and we check it if per request body sorry for changing nomenclature is not equal to cookie okay then we return the status code return status status code we change this i cost it as an integer http status code dot bad request and then we getting a id token it's a web where id token is equal to request dot home then here we adding a like credential and then we get a google uh, google json web signature google json web signature uh, we need to add a namespace for this so i'm pressing control dot it's a uh, using google.api.auth and then it's the payload the payload is equal to avat using a uh, async avat methods it's a uh, google json web signature dot uh, validate async here we pass a uh, id token that we created from here and then dot configure configure avat uh, here uh, is passing as a bool so this will be false then uh, you can get uh, different details that is posted from uh, google now you can uh, get uh, details like uh, i am fetching a name from this its name like uh, payload dot email and it's a uh, its name and then time data like i'm fetching uh, their email payload dot email uh, for testing purpose i am uh, return this uh, as this data as uh, json so i convert this and here i am uh, writing this payload can take comment this now the uh, code part is completed so for testing i am pressing uh, control f5 or and without tape again so i'm going to this about section this will uh, pop up uh, for uh, login means uh, this will display different uh, uh, gmail logins that uh, that, that you currently sign in uh, so i'm choosing like this my email then uh, it will it will redirect it to a method that you provided a new url from here it's a google response then this will uh, find all the details that response from uh, google it's provided like a email uh, email verified or not name last names given name family name pictures this the this is the picture section you can check from here this provide the picture section here 
and all the related means this is the by default uh, uh, by default values uh, that are posted from uh, google if you want uh, any special uh, fields then you can request from a uh, google cloud platform for getting uh, that values and if uh, if i want to paste that uh, uh, name or uh, name on about sections in that page so we need to uh, redirect to this on a uh, about section uh, redirect to action it's uh, about and here uh, we we display this uh, time data like here it's h1 tag like i'm using uh, s2 tag it's a name it's name then s2 s2 is a uh, email we display this uh, email here So now we uh, run control F5 for run this application here is showing error for a return. So I change this up for return. Now I again pressing control F5 for debug this application. Oh, uh, this uh, debugging in this code. Now this will be run then uh, we click on this about section here uh, firstly this name and email is blank so i click on this on my account then the name and email is uh, fetched from uh, google response so this is the complete process for a uh, google one tap sign in in sp.net core so if you have any questions any problem please write in comment box i will reply soon and if you like my videos please click on a subscribe button and for getting a latest update also click on notification bell so thanks thanks for watching we will meet in next video session